We continue our virtual tours in Lithuania and as usual we are going both to the large cities and to the small settlements and this day, today, we are visiting a little settlement, actually a village that is called Vabalninkas. Jews used to call it Vabolnik. If you ask the local ethnical Lithuanians where is Vabalninkas in Lithuania, where it is located, I am sure 90% of Lithuanian population will not know and will not show where is it, in the north or in the south, to the west or to the east. But for the Jews, this village in the rural part of Lithuania was really very important. The Jewish community that existed here for several hundred years yeah, is quite famous for some reasons. And we, will, we are going to tell you to speak about the Jewish life that existed here before the Holocaust. So we are in the center of Vabolnik or Vabolninkas little town and this is the most central place that once was a marketplace yeah and around the market of course a lot of small shops and the shopkeepers most of them were Jewish or even all of them were Jewish Jews were selling flax and rye and they had their shops and some business they, they dealt with uh, timber, flax of course and those who were less gifted they were artisans, craftsmen so uh, around the marketplace also were their, uh, their workshops the Jews are first mentioned in Vabolnik in a document that we have, that document in the year 1667. That means that at that time, end of 17th century, Jewish community already existed in Vabolnik. But we have a census in the Russian Empire of the year 1897, and this is we can rely on this uh, data, on these uh, 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 figures, because it was an, an official census in the Russian Empire, and according to this census, in the uh, settlement, there were 2,333 residents, and of them, 1823 were Jewish. That uh, made 78% of the population. So we can say that the center, especially the center, was Jewish. And at, as it is usual in uh, Lithuanian and Polish and Belarusian <coughs> little towns or villages, Jews used to settle in the shadow of the church because church usually was in the very central place and here the same we have here here is the church the catholic church of course yeah and around the church the marketplace where the jews had their shops and workshops so jews live here and here in 1914 comes the first world war and uh, <coughs> Russian army, as it is known, was living, was losing the, the war here. Yeah? And uh, the Russian army troops leave Robolnik. The Cossacks that were sitting here before leaving the, the settlement, <coughs> they arranged here the Jewish pogrom. So, also, according in, in, uh, during this pogrom, two of the of four synagogues were destroyed, were burned. Inside, there were books, Sifrei Torah, 
and uh, holy books and so on, all was destroyed except the Torah scrolls. Because Jews fleeing from this village, they took them to, to uh, uh, exile. They come back after the first war and, and they decide and they collect money, they raise money to <coughs> build a new the synagogues. This we will speak a bit later while walking in this little settlement. So behind me is the central market square that today is called Zholines Square and Zholines it is one of the most important Catholic holidays in Lithuania. It's uh, Zholines, it is the day of assumption of uh, Mary to the heavens. From this uh, square three roads are leading to the bigger cities in the area. Ponevežis, Birzai, Kupiškis and on these streets also there were Jewish shops and Jewish workshops and Jewish business. One of them was on this street was a hotel and this hotel this hotel belonged to the family to family Slavin and it was a quite big hotel it's possible to see it behind me the building of red bricks quite big and by occasion the visitors that used to come to Vabolnik of course to visit their relatives yeah, they stayed there in the hotel and Mrs. Slavin she was a very very good uh, customer for the local bakeries because at least Two, twice a week she used to order a big a big torte, a big uh, uh, pie uh, that uh, the bakers were very very happy to do for her. Also on this street on one of, in one of the houses we don't know unfortunately we don't know which one yeah, used to bring before Pesach used to bring the machinery for baking matzahs and of course the Jewish residents of Babolnik they had their own matzahs that were not less tasteful that we get today from Israel and also the last thing that I want to say about this street was that on that street maybe it was this house or this house in 1899, the couple Shach, Eliezer and Batsheva Shach gave birth to a boy, to a child, whose name was Eliezer Shach. And during the time when he grew, had grown up, he became one of the most important and famous figures in the Israeli politics and it is a famous Rabbi Eliezer Shach. The community, the Jewish community was quite serious and important. There were, as it was said before, there were four synagogues, but a Midrash we can say, in Vabolnik. But during the first war then they were destroyed. Two of them were burnt at all, and two of them were destroyed. One the, on this side, that is very typical, two thirds for the hall, main hall, and one third, the back one, for the uh, women's section, it was restored even during the German occupation during the first war. And after the war, when they, the Jewish residents, they came back from exile in Russia, 
they were eager to restore the summer synagogue, the bigger one. And they were sitting on this place and they were thinking how could they do, what could they do to restore the synagogue. And they came to a very hard conclusion to put on every Jew again the meat tax. And of those of that cash, of that uh, money that was collected, they could build a new, the summer synagogue that you see on that side. And as it was usual for many Jewish little towns or villages, that there were two synagogues together. The summer one, the bigger on your left, and the winter one, the smaller. A very typical picture for Jewish settlements. Paris Gatwe, Paris Street. This elegant name, this small street in Wabolnik, got because of the French army in, during the Napoleon War of 18 and 12 past this little settlement. But this street <coughs> has a sad story as well, sad for the Jewish uh, community. By this street, Jews, the local Jews that were concentrated in the Schulhof, means in the square between the two Schuls, they were concentrated there they were demanded to make a list of them because the Germans explained they want to prepare for the food uh, portions for all the, uh, the uh, residents. But this was a pure lie because it was not to let the Jews to escape from the place. And Along this street, they were sent to Pospol, a bigger city in the area, and near Pospol in the forest. They, all of them were murdered by shootings. And this was actually the end of the Jewish community of Wabolnik. And the sad, the most sad thing is that two buildings of Batei Midrash, of the synagogues, that local Jews made so much efforts to restore them, they still exist. But the Jewish community doesn't exist at all. And the only evidence of the Jewish life today, in today's Wabolnik, is the Jewish cemetery. And we are going to visit the cemetery and to show you some of the Matzevot. Here, in this Jewish cemetery of Wabolnik, there are 200, about 200 uh, tombstones. And all of them, they look very modest. This is the character of Jews of Lithuania, Litvakas. Because for them, it's not so important the decorations or some symbols. What is really important is the text, the words, their Hebrew meaning. We are coming to the last stop in the life of the Jews of the Jewish community in Wabolnik and here the cemetery is relatively in good position. According to the Lithuanian law, there must be an inscription, what is it? And it's written in Yiddish and in Lithuanian. The Alter Yiddisher Beselem, the old cemetery in Wabolnik. And these 200 tombstones, Matsevot, is actually the only evidence of the existence of the brilliant community 
that existed in Wobolnik for several hundred years. We happen to work with the descendants of Rav Shach, and here on the book you can see Wabalninkas, and there is it is a book of the memoirs of Rav Shach, and we can see two pictures, him, young one, and he is already in his 70s.